Hi, this is Sally and today I'm going to be working on quite an interesting project and to be honest I'm quite excited because I haven't worked on anything of this quality since I left the UK but that's another story. This is a man's jacket and the lining needs to be replaced and I can tell it's good quality because the lining has been hand sewn in and the jacket is all hand finished. I believe the gentleman got it when he used to live in New York and although we live in Texas and I really feel quite bad because he should have had it last week when it was really cold I'm going to be getting on with it and showing you how to do this so let's get on with it obviously the first thing I need to do is to take the lining out because I'm going to use that as a template I really don't want to be leaving threads in so I take as many out as I can as I go and seeing as it's hand sewn in it's just really a case of unpicking them. Remember what stitch they've used and how much of a turning it's been given. This will help when you put a new lining in. But I need to be careful with this lining because it's quite shredded in places and don't cut the coat or jacket. Cut a few threads ahead and pull it out. There's a few stitches here to hold that fold in. That's always worth knowing. You see it's all hand finished across here. I'm not sure how long the gentleman said he's owned this jacket but it's certainly quite a while. I'm going to work up along either side of the flap at the back of the jacket. So they go up, once they get here, then they go along the higher length. And so there's movement in the lining, but everything's held into place. I can tease it out and see where the stitches are, because I don't want to get the hand sewing that's along here. Otherwise I'll have more of a repair than I really need to be doing. Go up the other side too. On the inside it's almost on the edge which is fine then on the outside flap it's in i'll be able to follow the texture of the coat to work out which one is which they've got hand stitching here and it's in a thick almost upholstery thread this is what it looks like on the inside and i have to undo this very carefully don't rip it out it's really firmly hand sewn in so i'm going to have to be very careful when i redo it even if you're doing a normal jacket for yourself or even a little vanity pleat in a skirt this is actually worth remembering to put the lining in like this before you sew the vanity across so let's say it's really worth undoing high-end clothes if you can i've come to this part the hand sewn seam is along here and if I pull these threads they actually go under stitching here so I have to remember when I put the inside of the collar in up to here I then have to pull it down and then hand sew over the top to hold it in place. The nice thing about this is I can see where all my stitches have to go in. You can see the fabric underneath is one colour and one texture and the rest of it is a more worn texture. The side was done first and then the collar and shoulders were put in on top because this is the key to putting it all back together. It's got stay stitching to hold that into place. This is cotton wadding. I'm going to have to undo the sleeve. As I undo more of it, we'll see how it was done. If you're to be doing a normal jacket off the shelf, then you wouldn't have all of this, but do take your lining out carefully so that you know how it is put in. That's when I get a little bit nervous. Taking all of these lovely stitches out. There we go. For this, I can use upholstery weight for putting this in because this is really thick cotton compared to the hand sewing along the sides. Put a pin on this side so I know where it goes in and a pin here on the other side lined up so I know where that fold goes because this is quite important. This stitching goes over the edge to hold all of this in place. You should remember all of this. That's the only thing when you're doing hand sewn things, what stitches you're pulling out and what ones you're not pulling out. There's lots of layers and you've got to be very careful with each layer and why you're doing it. So I am going to gently tease this sleeve out so I can see what it is I'm doing. Now, as I've undone this, this is sewn in like this because it's all sewn together as one piece. But the other part is that this lining comes around here is also attached to here. So I've got to remember to do that. Otherwise, it will all fall around. This all keeps together. So that's that side out. And now I've got to work on this side. One of the reasons why they put this running stitch here is so that you know where to bring your sleeve to because if you look at that, say undo it, is right where that running stitch is. 
So I'll need to measure from the side there to here and make sure I put the running stitch exactly where it needs to be when I take everything out. All of the reminders are there. You've just got to remember them when you're putting it all back together. And then I'll be able to cut with the new lining to go in here. Always make sure you're cutting the stitch closest to the piece you're taking out just in case and it's something that you don't want to be taking out. And of course this is cotton wadding so it gets a little bit caught up so you have to be extra specially careful or vigilant as you go. I think I've got all of this undone. The next thing I'm going to do is undo this seam. The dart is actually machine sewn in so I'm going to do the same when I put the darts in and start ironing things I think. Here are the front panels and if I lay them out like this they're matching at the top here. They're more or less matching there. But when I come here, this is about half an inch down. I'm wondering if that is why this area here wore out because it was hooked up a little bit higher than it needed to be. So I'm going to use the bottom as my pattern. But I think what I'll do is I'll fold that in half and I'll use the bigger side of the half to cut the pattern. And here again, I'm just going to extend it up a little bit longer. You usually have on a pattern a straight line with arrows and that's where you have to run either your warp or your threads. So the ones either going up and down or crossways. With the wear and tear of this outfit, you probably can't see it, but I can see there's a straight line all the way up here. So I'm going to pick that line because it's the longest. I'm going to measure from here in. I'm going to move the line to the seven inches, which is there. Pin it like that. Hopefully that's gone through both layers. Make sure it's seven inches up. Now I've got that line marked and even. I can pin the rest of this out. Here at the top I've got the arm. It's a little bit uneven but not too bad. Then on this edge here I'm going to put the two folds together like that. And when I flatten it out evenly I can fold along here, put another pin in. That tells me that that's on the warp or weft thread. Then I will start pinning this into place. Once I'm happy, everything's organized. The reason I haven't cut this out and then pinned this, by having all of this pinned together, it just keeps everything straight for me. The neck is a little bit uneven, but I think that's where it goes. So I will put some pins in here. Smooth the two sides of this jacket down, then pin where the center is like this because I'm not going to be able to make it do what I want it to do. I can only make it do what it wants it to do. Here you'll see that this side comes in a lot more than the outer side but I'm going to pin it to the outer side. This is the seam that was right on the edge so technically by giving it that much more I'll have more for the seam. In effect it's a win-win. Ease that like that put a pin there that will hold that. I'm going to put that over the side of the table a little bit so give the fabric a little bit more weight. If I look at the wear and tear in this, the warp and weft threads are more or less straight so I think I've got it. It evens out more or less down here, it's not very far and by the time I've given it 5 eighths of an inch standard seam allowance I think that will be fine along there. I was a little bit curious as to make sure that everything was the same top and bottom so it more or less is there. You can see I've added a little bit extra. I think it's not going to make much difference on the front here because everything's been taken into consideration. I'm going to cut where the top fold is and where the fold is on that side and the same on this side. That's so that I know where those items are. I'm going to just come in here a little way and on up and that will give me the seam allowance that I'm looking for. Actually it's a little bit generous but that'll be fine all the way to the top. I don't like the way that comes in so I'm going to smooth it out. When I sew it it will come in a little bit better. I'm happy with that. There's a fold here that goes over, so I'm going to put a little cut there and a little cut there because that folded underneath the arm like that and then remember to put those little stitches a little bit further down to hold it. So everything comes into place where I need it. The other thing that I need to do is I'm going to put a pin at the top here and at the bottom there for my dart. 
and I will mark it on the other side in a minute once I've separated these two. I've managed to get my pin marks on both and I've got one set of pins on one side like that and the other side like that. That makes a pair. The times I have not done it that way and had two fronts the same side are numerous and very annoying. I will iron that into position on both. I've got my tails there which I've got quite long. I'm going to put my needle down so if I take that out and pop it in at right angles like that. I can see where the base of my pin is at that join like that. Take the pin out. You don't want that left in there. I'm going to sew along here to about here where it should be about a quarter of an inch allowance and then back into the top. I'm not going to do forward and back because I don't want to ruck up the end around about halfway, level it out slightly and then start aiming for the top and the top. I'm going to do the same, put my pin at right angles which is the top of the dart. So I'm now aiming for the top of the dart. Just come in gently. Take that out because it's only going to be a couple more stitches. And again I'm going to leave nice long tails and this is why I left long tails because I'm going to tie those tails in a knot. It just stops them pulling through. And now for the other. Different people do it different ways. This is the way I was taught. My mum and my grandmother told me this way, so that's what I do. That's got a dart on it. I'm going to just place the wrong side face down on here, like that. Now I'm gonna start at the bottom of the lining. Make sure the ends are where they need to be. I would normally start at the top if I'm doing a dressmaking project or edges against the tape and I'm going to start a little ways in because that doesn't matter. I usually do half an inch and that's really nice and easy to eyeball but this is five eighths and I just want to make sure it's correct. And on up. And then it's nice and easy for me to follow. It might wobble a little bit but that's because this wasn't cut exactly as it should be. At this point it doesn't run level. What I'm going to do is bring it back into line like this so that I can carry on following this on up. Even that out slightly as I work my way up. I'm going to just carry on right to the top because some of this will be cut back anyway. It wants to walk out, I've got to try to keep it in as much as I can. I want to make sure that I've got both sides of this going the right way. Pop this down. This is the outside where the seam's going. And here's the other piece that I'm putting in. I know this is the right way because there is the dart that I've just put in. I'm just going to go up and I'll adjust this when I get to the point that I need to adjust. As I pressed the side seam in, I pulled from the top of that awkward area to the bottom which means that it actually put in a crease and I'm going to sew from just one side of that crease all the way down to the other. That's where the gentleman's hips are. Men really don't have hips so it doesn't matter if I sew that in and I'll do that on both sides. I'm going to just stitch along here just a couple of little stitches like this across to hold this pleat in place. I'm going to copy everything they did because it's a hand sewn item. These are loose stitches so that the item can still move as the person is moving and I'll finish off here with a couple of stitches to hold that in place. I believe that this is real silk and it is a twill weave so it's the same weave that you have on your denim jeans and it moves quite nicely like this. This on the other hand is polyester and it is a normal up and down weave like on a cotton and if you hold them together like that and twist them this twill on the top when I twist, it's still twisting. You can see the one underneath that at that point, there's lots of wrinkles. So this has a lot more movability and this one has limited. It still moves on the bias, but it just doesn't have the same amount as the one on top. What I've ended up doing, I've ironed in the two inches at the bottom where the hem goes, and I've also ironed in the five eighths 
across the front on both sides and across the neck. Usually you would baste everything into position but because this is not behaving the same way I'm going to have to sew the two sides in of the front of the jacket in first. This is where my line is for sewing and it goes further back by about half an inch from the base. So I'm going to start that along here, put that into place like that and put a pin in to hold everything where it needs to be. I'm going to work my way up from the bottom. I can see where the difference is in the weave, which means I'm going to put my fold on there. I'm not going to pull it, I'm just going to leave it flat and put another pin in like that. Move along, lay it so it's nice and flat and do the same till I get to the top. Having worked from the bottom up, the lining seems to have stayed in place a little bit better than when I worked from the top down. This pleat here from the top seam here down should be just over three inches and it is. So I'm going to just pop this pin right here to hold that in place too. I'm going to sew that from the top down because I'm right-handed and I can keep it flatter that way. I've lined the base of this with the lower edge of the coat and I have started sewing about two inches up. The stitch that I am using is one that I use in upholstery frequently. I'm going to just go in through the edge of the fabric, about a quarter of an inch, like that, and then come exactly opposite where I come out, and then across about a quarter of an inch. Pull the thread out. Where the thread comes out there, go straight into the fabric along about a quarter of an inch, like that, and pull it out and repeat. If it's quarter of an inch it mimics a sewn line with a machine. If I was to do this as a machine project I would have pinned the lining like this to the side of the jacket and then sewn up with the machine. But because all of this is hand sewn down I'm not able to do it that way which is why I am doing it this way. I'm coming into the pocket here, comes out and then it goes in here so I am going to Make sure that's even to here. I'm going to put a pin about here just to hold it. Make sure that that is all flat. I've laid everything as flat as I can. Here is the pocket. So I'm going to just cut along the pocket join. I'm only going to do little cuts because I don't want to have anything going out and I certainly don't want to cut what's underneath there like this. I haven't managed to cut anything that I shouldn't because I'm lifting it up slightly. I think it goes a little bit further. What I have to do is to fold that down and into place so I don't twist anything and then I will do the same with this and put this in above like that. Pin that up and out of the way so it covers where the original stitching was. So I'll pin that into place as well. I'm not pulling anything up or down so it should be fine. And then when I get to the end here I've just got to make sure it goes round. I'll mess with that when I get there. Something I thought about and not until I'd started to put the lining in is to tag the down the lining, pull this back up, make sure that the bottom of the fold on the lining is at the bottom of the coat. Coming up this seam here and I'm going to match it with the top of the pleat right here. Put a little stitch through to start off with. Double check that that's where I want everything. I have doubled my thread so I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and even. Go straight down and through as close to the seam as possible and up and through less than quarter of an inch. They've got to be really close stitches. Pull it like that then back down. It's a little bit awkward because you've got to keep your threads straight. And then I've got six threads going through and come back up. So that's about half an inch. Try to make them even. And then all you're going to do is put a blanket stitch around those threads. It takes a little minute to get them started. Because I've got double thread, you just need to be a little bit more aware of what you're doing. And that is all I am doing across here so that they run along here. Just repeat it. You don't have very much space to do it. And you don't have to have them terribly tight. It's just to reinforce those stitches so they don't close up. There's nothing really holding them in place. When you've finished, just go through the fabric 
and cast off, which is usually two or three stitches through each other. I tend to do it more of a running stitch so I can see where my stitches are and then I can go through them. So if I put my fingers behind it you can see what I've done and that should be adequate for what you need and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side, level with the top of the pleat. It just stops the movement of the lining too much. Although I have tagged this, I'm still putting a pin in so that I don't pull anything up and I'm not pulling anything down. That will hold it exactly where I need it to be. As I look along here, I can see where the stitches were for the hem. So I am going to measure. I think that one looks about even, close enough. Having messed with it a little bit, I'm going to make it an inch and a half because if this seam is there like that and I fold it down, it covers where the original was. You can tell that because there's stitches here still. If I bring that down in line, so this is straight, and put a pin in, but I'm not gonna start sewing on the edge. I'm gonna start sewing about half an inch in, I think. I'm gonna go down first and out like that. Now the stitching along the bottom was slightly different. It actually went in through the top and across about quarter of an inch make sure that that's where I want it then up in and across and that was how they had hemmed this because nobody is going to see it and it's only just in make sure I haven't done anything up there and I'll pull those through so I'm going to measure my way across here until half of the hem of the coat is in place I'm not going to go too far I'm just going to measure maybe an inch ahead of myself all the way along so that I can make the alterations I need because this is wider I'm going to bring it back slightly so that it gathers in a little bit not too much I don't want too much in here just a little bit when you've got a thread that's messing with you put your needle underneath and then pull it in like that I'm folding the fabric up over my fingers so that the lining fabric has a little bit further to go than the fabric underneath. This is literally just going through the top layer so I won't have any sign of my stitching on this side. As you can see there's a slight wrinkle. That allows for the curvature because the width of the coat at the bottom is slightly wider than the width here so you want this to go in slightly wrinkled to allow the lining to be flat at the bottom without it being too noticeable. The seam here of the outer coat and the seam of the inner coat and I need those two to line up. I actually only do three sets of stitches, so that's one set, two set, and three, and I'll pull that through. You can't do more than that, otherwise you end up with a bit of a mess. It doesn't want to pull through. This is the inside of the lining. I'm going to run that along the seam here. This is where the hem is, and this is where the outside of the coat is. If I look on the other side, there's quite a big seam. So what I'm going to do is cut up, giving a little bit more seam allowance on this side. I'm a little ways out from the coat, cutting straight up. I'll move that up there like that. And I need to get all the way up here to make sure that's still where that needs to be, to there. Now I will see where that actually comes. There's the stitching for the vent of the coat. I can go just a little bit further up, just going to take it in slightly like that. Flatten out side seam across and bring that into place like this. I might need to cut that a little bit more, just a wee tad. Bring that out to here. If it's too loose it's going to flap and show on the outside of the coat. The seam is on the seam, that's there, and pin it. The seam is on the seam here, pull it out like that and pin it. Seam is on the seam here, pull that out and pin it. And then I can sew that into place. Just need to work the bottom here in so it's nice and neat. I'm going to work from the top down, put a couple of stitches in here first, take that out, just to hold it. It's the ladder stitch that I used all the way down the front edges and I'm going to keep it in line with here. There's the original stitches and I don't want to go over. There's a reason why they were there and that's so that the lining wouldn't show beyond that point. I'm going to work my way to the bottom of this side. As I was coming down here, this was going to come down quite low, which I wasn't happy about. I have just recut the base of this, which should take it to there, and then that should come in where it needs to 
the previous lining was so soft this is a firmer weave and it just wasn't working as well I'll sew it back in the nice thing about hand sewing is it's so much easier to start and stop you don't have all those silly stitches to take out when you are machine sewing this actually goes in quite nicely now I folded this in over and that down this lines up with the stitching here as long as that's got a nice sharp corner that'll be fine. I'm going to finish here and then back stitch just at a 45 degree angle here to hold it like it was originally and I think that will work. I'm just going to restart here and carry on down to this corner. When you've ironed the hem in it's really sometimes a little bit awkward to get your needle in behind on a very thin fabric. I'm going to finish off here. Put a very small stitch in there because I really want to come in here and catch that corner down. I'm coming in on the corner here and up like this. They should be small stitches and of course with the thick fabric underneath. They're not always as tight as they need to be. And then I come back and again as a back stitch. They don't have to be nice and neat and on end. All they're doing is holding it. But I also use this as a way of casting off. So if I go up and down a couple of times, I don't have to worry about casting off too much. From here all the way down to the front here trim that back. That's that side in and that side. I've strained the lining out all the way to the top. These follow the seams here and here. I don't think I'm going to need to make another cut in here. I think that's fine. The only trouble I have at the moment is down here and I'm going to put this along here. I'm going to re-iron from here into here and that should give me a nice finish to sew in. My original line is here and I am just going to cut this back otherwise it goes a bit bulky in there. Pin this into place here so I know where that goes. I'm just going to sew down this front edge like I did on the front edge of the jacket faces and also here. Now I need to work out how to put the kick pleat in. Stretch that out. Here's the old lining. If I line that up here and here I can get some idea of what's going on. The stitching here is higher, so that goes up here, and it had ripped there, so it had gone in here and down. But there's only one side of stitching for the top of the kick pleat, which means I'm gonna undo here to about here so that I can see where I'm stitching. I can feel the stitches, I just can't see them. Okay problem solved. I've actually undone a little bit further than I wanted to but I think that's flat enough there. I'm going to use a quilting pin to hold that all into position there because it's nice and long. I'll do a running stitch and then do a second row of running stitches so that it all fits in nicely. I'm going to have to be very careful putting those stitches in. This part I'm a little bit nervous about because I don't want to move it too much. You can see where the stitching was and come up through here. I really need to get it into the original placement of the stitches. So here's my first. Now I've used doubled up thread because I want it to be a little bit prominent. And I'm going to go straight down like that. I now need to come through this stitch mark here which I'm going to hold there and hopefully when I flip everything else up I've got it in the right place here. Pull my thread through go down the next stitch hole straight down. You have to do this quite carefully because I want it to be exactly in this area and the only way I can do that is to mimic what was already here. It's not a contrast so it shouldn't be that visible if I get it wrong. I just need it to be as close as possible. Down the next stitch hole here, make sure everything is straight and then down the next hole here. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get around both sides. All I'll do is fill in the stitches in between so that it looks like it was machine sewn. When you pull your stitches through, make sure they go all the way through. Going to the other side and I'm going to pull that back. Otherwise your stitches might get loose and you don't want that to happen. Because it's double thread, you really need to make sure that your thread stays together. And that's why I set each stitch separately. Now, a trick that I learnt years ago from my mama is I'm just looping a pin so that it stays 
firm. I'm not going to go too far up, just a little ways. I'm going to pull my needle through, let that pull in tight like that. Pull the needle out and that stitch has gone in without twisting. I'll do the same on the other side. It just makes the stitches stay a little bit more unraveled. Pull that in like that. I've got this little piece of stitching in and now I can set down the inside pleat. Here's my next set of clues. If I lay that on top of there, which is where those stitches are. There's nothing that holds this in place along here, which I'm a little bit surprised about. And then if I fold this over like this, there's two rows of stitching up there. That comes down here and holds all of this into place, which is why this gave, because the stitching went from here all the way through. So I am going to put a couple of big tacking stitches to hold the center here onto the inside of the seam here. I think that will hold it. Then there won't be so much wriggling of fabric here, which shouldn't tear it across here. I can feel the tag stitching here and here. So I think that's enough and there's still a little bit extra fabric moving here so it's not going to be that tight. I've laid the lining down from the bottom up and there's the stitching here. Pull that back, put a pin along the line of the top stitching here. My stitching needs to come down here twice to hold it and then along here to hold the top of this into place. I'm going to draw two pencil lines along that line there so I know where I'm sewing. I've already put one row of stitching in. I'm going to start off on this end like this. The other one I was able to start off by putting the stitch right at the top there. So that's my start point. I'm going to set a little stitch facing the way the line goes and then I'm going to go back. So I'm doing a little back stitch. It's about half an inch in length, but each back stitch is quarter of an inch. So they're nice and even. I've got double thread. Make sure everything goes through evenly. I've got some of the weight off the end of the table here. I am now going to go across the fold just into the fabric there. I'm just going to sew the top of this down and into place. The other fabric had a little bit more give in it so it probably went in a little bit smoother than this is going in but I'm working with what I've got. The lining kind of curls up and into place so you don't want to be catching anything underneath there if you can help it. I've sewn all the way down here. This is the end of these stitches underneath. I can feel there's a little bit of fabric underneath from the underside that belongs to the flap under here. So I'm just going to over stitch all the way through those pieces and it should keep everything into position there. It's not going to be very pretty but the stitching wasn't that pretty on the original. I need to bring this up along here which doesn't seem quite right to me and this is why I keep everything before I get rid of it is I hadn't put the center mark in or the pleat which is here I'm going to mark that one and I'm going to mark this one here before I start working on placing the inside sleeve in there's just a couple of things I've got to do and the first one is to bring that back out see it's not attached here the original had cross stitching I'm just going to over stitch. I'm not going to go over where the sewing is, where the sleeve comes in. It's literally just over the edge like this. And don't pull it in too tight. All it's doing is holding stuff in place. I have a real bad tendency to pull my stitching in very tight because in upholstery you often need it that way. I'm having to be a little bit more cautious here. I'm going to do that all the way around this sleeve. I need to make sure this goes in nicely. I have the pleat here and my pin there and they actually line up so I'm pleased about that. We'll remove the pin and just pin that in so I have it exactly where I want it. I'm not going to worry about the bottom here. This will come in in a minute and I didn't finish sewing around the pocket just in case I needed to move anything. It dawned on me that maybe it would alter as I put everything into the arm. So I open the top of the coat out just a little bit like that. Push the shoulder in. I need to catch down from here to the inside. I'm going to keep the top here as flat as I can and just pin a couple of pins in to hold it in place. Now this is weird because on the other side and I cut them the same. This actually went further over and into the armhole 
whereas on this side it doesn't. That's the thing about custom made items, they're not always exact. Pop that in here and actually I can feel underneath there is a discrepancy. The inside of the shoulder on the sleeve is here. This is the outside of the coat and this lines up with the sleeve. When I do my stitches around here, I've got to remember that. I'm just going to do a running stitch. What my mother would call homeward bounders. They're not meant to be nice and pretty. I'm going towards the top of this fabric because I'm going to bring the shoulder in and sew it across here. It's going through the shoulder pad and that will hold everything in place. I can remove that one. I am actually going to take it all the way through to the shoulder here and just over stitch it a couple of really big stitches that tells me where the end is so when I bring my stitch line up I can just cover that and then I'll cast off this seam here lines up with this seam here that seam is the back seam of the jacket I'm going to make sure that that isn't pulled tight it's got to be quite smooth if anything I'm going to pull the outside of the jacket against the lining there we go and the lining is going to have a few stitches attached to this piece of fabric here this moves so it allows the lining to move with it and all I'm doing is a couple of small stitches to hold it it's free from the outside of the jacket so it's going to move as the gentleman moves and finish it off so that's secure. I need to flatten this out as well as I can. So I'm going to put a pin in here. This is on inside of where the seam is. So the seam is along here somewhere. I need to put a pleat here that goes this way. Make sure that's in line and put a pin here. I'm bringing the seam here along the seam at the back and pulling that into place as well and I'm going to pull in the back of the sleeve all the way to the top. Flatten out the jacket as much as I can so that this goes into place. I don't want to pull it too much because this pleat has to stay here. I'm going to pin the lining to the armhole. I must say it was easier on the other side than this side. Then just bring this up into the neckline. The neckline is here. I'm not sure where the shoulder goes so I'm just going to put a pin there to hold it. Then I've got somewhere to to aim for. This takes a while to work out because you're doing it from the inside and it has to be the right shape otherwise you'll end up with a little bit too much fabric and then it'll be all puckery and not very good. Let me see how that goes. Because of the way I ended up having to cut this because I hadn't understood that the lining was so flimsy I'm going to try to give as much as I can to the pleat at the back of the jacket because that was something else it wasn't a uniform pleat all the way down it was a little bit wonky. I need to fold all of this into a straight line to that shoulder seam. I can't stretch it, it just has to go in in a nice angle. It's a little bit difficult because this really doesn't want to play ball. I don't really want to take that pin out because it's in quite a good place. There's the join. I'm going to pull that there, twist it out slightly so that I have a little bit more fabric inside. I'm actually going to go in and come out on the corner where I need to be putting the fabric in like that. Realign that and then start sewing as I have everywhere else. And I'm going to work my way into that shoulder seam. It will go in quite nicely. I'm gonna start sewing. <laughs> There's no good place to start sewing really. I'm gonna go from here. I'm going to keep my finger underneath so I can feel where the seam is for the sleeve. I'll pull that back slightly like that. I can feel where the sleeve is and I'm going to do this all the way around the armhole. Just come in out slightly from where the seam is because you don't want the stitches showing on the other side. Don't pull them in too tight so if you have to loosen it up a bit do so. I did try originally to sew it the right way which is from the sleeves down but I just could not get it to work so I had to do it this way around and then down the other side. As I pulled this one down I've discovered that it's locked in. Let's see where those threads go to. They're locked in about here which is midway up the arm. I think I could probably get to it from this end. That's so that the sleeve won't twist. Taking things apart is the best way of learning how to do upholstery or sewing. Careful not to cut those threads. I don't want to have to re-sew those buttons in. 
I'm just making sure I'm not cutting anything underneath that I shouldn't be cutting. That's that sleeve out. Now I'll work on the other. I've taken both sets of sleeves apart. If I lay the outside sleeve, lay those on each other. And you will see that this comes down at an angle. The one on top, I can pull it slightly. It almost matches here. If I look under here, this is slightly more rounded than the underside. What I'm going to do is I'll leave these on top of each other and then I'm going to cut round the biggest of the pair. So in this case, the bottom of this one and the outside edge of this one to get the outside sleeve. Here again, this is the bit that goes under your arm. If I line those two up, the bottom of the sleeves are totally different. Turn them over. This is where they vary because this one comes right down and this one, which is the rattier of the two sleeves, was higher. I think what I need to do is use this one underneath but because I'm unsure, I'm going to cut it to the top one and then I'm going to slide them into the sleeves and work out what it is I'm doing from there. Here again, I have a problem. The problem is lining up my warp and weft threads. Let's get that sorted. You can see where the wear and tear is crossways. Do that with that one. The rest should go into place. And I'll cut this one out in a minute. Once you've got them cut out, pair them up. I've got my sleeve going that way and my sleeve going that way. Then on top, I've got my sleeve going this way and my other one going this way. I'll sew them together. I have my matching pair of sleeves. Pressed open the seams and I have put in a three quarter inch hem allowance. There's the seam there, goes over, and then the back seam. So that one's for this arm. All I do is put them in to start off with so I don't get them mixed up. Get them facing the right way. I'll pin those in so that I can sew it, and then those seams should follow on up. I am sewing in the sleeve, I'm doing it using the same stitch as had just come out. I do have to be a little bit careful as to where the stitches originally went because it's not very clear. It might be a good idea actually to measure it like I did before. It's about an inch in. So I'm just going to measure an inch across and line everything up and make those little stitches. It's like reverse engineering. You've got to work it all out from one way to another. These will go in nicely. I have to remember to go below the buttons. One side of the sleeve one way and this side this way. This side has a little bit extra fabric that needed to be caught in and this is a good way of doing it because you're stretching it over the sleeve itself. And I've just come in and secure this. This is where the buttons were so I've brought this down as far as I could but keeping it in line it won't be a problem. Bring that in and I will go back up side here. There's just a little bit more leeway here. I'll cast off and do the other sleeve. I've just folded this down a quarter of an inch and I'm pinning that into place because I don't want to risk pulling the top end of the sleeve too tight because you need movement in the lining of your sleeves. It doesn't have to be too much movement but you do need a little bit so that should hold that. I am going to cut back this slightly because I did make it longer. I wasn't quite sure when I was cutting it where everything went because it had been so badly ruined. Take that out and all the way up. I've lined up this seam with the inside seam here. I'm just going to fold that over like that about a quarter of an inch I think and pin it on this side. This seam goes to the back side of the jacket that down make sure everything's not twisted inside there we go and I am going to put a tag on this side like I did on the coat lining just through here I need this seam here which I'm going to fold over about half an inch to line up with the top of this seam here like that pin that into position and I'm just going to fold the fabric over and pin it into place all the way around the armhole usually you have marks as to where these go in this I don't I'm just having to guess so that's why I'm just putting a half inch seam allowance on roll that round and into position I'll get a better look at it later this ended up being quite gathered I am going to do the same gather it in a bit there we go I've doubled my thread and I'm going to start at the top Pop that in these big white stitches have to be covered I'm going to go down here small stitches again just like I have everywhere else and I have to pull in a lot of this fabric along the back it's not so important but I will have to ease it in so I'm going to make a big stitch there and I'm going to bring that back just slightly so it's not quite opposite and then into place. 
I'm not going to pull it too tight because you don't want the sleeve to give because the stitching is too tight. Another stitch down, bring that back slightly and then place your stitch underneath to hold it. I am going to do that all the way around the base of this sleeve and then I'll do the top of the sleeve. Make sure your stitching is covered. Every now and again I'll check to make sure that still is the half inch seam allowance that I want. Being round it's very easy to straighten your seam out and then you don't have your half inch. You have a mess under there. I've unpinned here and the same on that side. I've straightened everything out and now I have this to put in. The centre back has to go down the centre of here and then this pulls into place. I'm going to put some back stitches here to hold everything in place. So I don't want it moving as I sew it in. Once that's in place I'm going to roll down the top like that. Pull it into the neckline where the original sewing was and pin it. Then I'll pin out to both sides as well. And I'll sew that in exactly the same way as I've sewn everything else in. Before I finish off, I need to make sure that this is in line. I've got the dart here, which is here. So I'm going to line that stitching up there like that. And then come across here. If I put my fold here and line up this, this is almost where that is. I'll bring that up slightly. Here is where the stitching is. So I'm going to put a pin where the fold is and then that's there. So if I carry on across there's the end of there. I'm thinking that's where I need this to all go. I always double check. No that's a little bit narrower. There should be a pleat here. I'm going to fold it that way into there. By pulling that out like that, I'm now going to remove those two pins and put one there. I'm really only interested in where it is in relationship to here. I'm going to go to the back side of the pleat. It's going to be a little bit awkward because it's in one piece now. I'm going to do a couple of running stitches, but I'm also going to come back on myself. I have to roll the fabric away from underneath because I don't want to catch that. And now I can take that pin out. I don't want to catch anything but that fabric. So I've gone both ways and now I'm going to carry on another one backwards and forwards. That is so that I can cast off. Sometimes when you cast off you don't have to go over the same stitches. You just have to go back on yourself a couple of times because that will hold everything for you. The stitches are going into each other so it's not like any of them are going to be loose. If I cut the threads like that and straighten that up, the threads have gone. Now I'll do the other side. Pull that up there like that and put this pin into the coat to hold it. Now I have this little area here to sew into place. It should turn out quite well. Earlier I had this all sewn across but it was wrinkling. Sometimes you have to go back the other way and that is what I'm doing. I'm just going to try to get this in as neatly as I can. I'm doing little over stitches like this just so that I can hold it. They have to be really tiny because there is very little fabric behind there. I'm pushing the fabric back underneath with my needle and then a tiny stitch to hold it in place and I'll ease this in and around like this. It shouldn't look too bad. Once I get around this corner I will sew this way across and that should take up any of that fabric like uh, upholstery. Sometimes you have to do things another way around just to get them to do what you want them to do. I think that's how I want it. So I will change my stitch on the next one, pull that underneath just a little bit more, set another stitch, and then I am going to change my style and hem it. And that will take that into position for me. I've taken all the pins out from there. It's loose, which is what it's meant to be like. The tags have been put in on the sides here. The pocket has gone in relatively well. I'm quite pleased with that as well. It's gathered under there, which is unusual, but it's also gathered over the top so it should give him plenty of room. Thank you for joining me. Please subscribe and hit the bell button and in the meantime take care. See you later. Ciao.